despite the journey of, despite my personal journey of um, rehabilitation with an acquired brain injury being one that was very difficult, there were actually some very, I have some fantastic, funny memories in it. And Grania and I actually remember that we haven't laughed um, as hard ever in our lives as some of those early few years when, after I got back home from the hospital and so forth. There were, because I, there was this blissful six months after I got out of the hospital and I, you know, I learned about how to walk again and was, things were very, very tricky and bizarre, but I had, for the first time in my life, I had realized the extent to which I had no control over things. Um, someone who had, you know, had been a classroom teacher in New York who had been kind of organizing all sorts of things and was very much in control of getting everything done. And suddenly I was blurting ridiculous things out on the street to people like, stop arguing, the sun is shining, and telling, you know, salesmen in Castle Court Shopping Center that I saw them swooping and I, would, I knew that they would be um, trying to sell me something, just bizarre stuff that wasn't me. And um, so all Grani and I could do was laugh about those things. And there's one, one moment in, in the finished piece in which um, I remember it really clearly. And it was a period in which I could not control my emotions. I, one minute I was really high laughing and things were funny. And the next I would just, I felt like I was on this emotional roller coaster. And it, I remember it was the n final night of ER, the last show ever of ER. And of course, it was all very emotional for the actors. And I was lying there sobbing, and I was like, this is awful, this is so terrible. And Grania was due to come home from a meeting that she was having with somebody, and uh, she was late. And I knew, on the one hand, I was like, she's late, that there's no big deal, there's no problem. And on the other hand, I was, didn't, I couldn't, I couldn't, on a neurological level, like I couldn't balance out the emotion, the strong emotion I was feeling from uh, the final episode of ER and, you know, intellectually knowing that, yes, you know, Gron is running late from something, combined with the, the immense feelings of loss that I had that I, you know, I couldn't go out for a drink anymore with her. I couldn't be social because I couldn't take all the noise, the, the fact that we were having to redefine so much of what made us who we are together. Um, and so I had somehow gotten in my head and also combined with a lot of, you know, I, I didn't like myself at times because I didn't know who I was anymore. And so I had somehow gotten into my, so all that was in the mix and there was ER and there was her being late and there was me not liking this acquired brain injury thing. And, and then she came home and I just remember going, oh my God, you know, furious, you're having an affair, of course you are, and of course she's not, of course she's not. But then going on this manic ride of moments of clarity when I knew it was ridiculous and bursting out laughing because I was like, oh my God, this is so ridiculous, to then the next minute crying and sobbing. And I just remember, this is crazy. This, if this is what acquired brain injury is, I don't know what is ahead. I don't know how I, yeah. And you just have to go, wee! and we'll see what happens. And so there were definitely positive, despite it all, there were definitely positive moments in the mayhem, in the trauma.